Hi everybody, it's the Tuesday TNT. Really appreciate you dropping in. We've got a lot to cover today in a short time. A few bits of very quick housekeeping first. Best wishes go out to Ed Sweeney up in Patea. Now he's being well looked after by Nick Dean, who on his YouTube channel is keeping us informed. Now Ed's going to have to undergo some sort of brain surgery. It looks like uh, later this week or on the weekend. Uh, but Nick is looking after him and keeping us informed on his uh, YouTube channel, which is NDTVI. And if anybody would like to keep up to date, then, well, Nick's doing all the hard work for you. So best wishes to you, Ed Sweeney, as you uh, face this surgery. Uh, you're in very good hands and uh, we wish you well. And uh, you're doing a great job, Nick. So thank you from all of us. Now, uh, to another one, this message came in through our comments section yesterday. It relates to the extension of the visa exemption from 30 days up to 60 days. It was all meant to start on Saturday, June the 1st. Mass confusion, as predicted by some. But Epoch sent us this. I went through Bangkok Customs on the weekend. This would be uh, Swanapum, I'm assuming, and uh, told the customs agent 60 day stamp. He looked confused and checked with someone, then stamped 60 days. Uh, just make sure you tell them before they stamp. Well, not so much tell them, just uh, point it out politely if they don't know about it. But um, it, it seems some people are getting the 60 day stamps, many aren't. But keep me informed and uh, we'll pass it on. Now to a person that will be arriving in Thailand. And uh, probably today, a Bangkok Post reporting fugitive Chowalit to return from Jakarta on chartered flight. Now, you might remember this story from last October when this prisoner at the time was in the Nakhon Si Tamarat jail and uh, he needed some dental treatment. But um, that was all a ruse so he could escape and he gave police a merry chase. But he's been caught. And high profile fugitive Chowalit. Uh, will be extradited to Thailand on a chartered flight organised by Indonesian authorities. Apparently a previous plan to bring him home on a Royal Thai Air Force aircraft came under public scrutiny. I'm not sure why. A source said the chartered aircraft will fly directly from Jakarta to Nakhon Si Tamarat later today. And the 37-year-old fugitive will arrive at the provincial airport in Nakhon Si Tamarat then be taken to the city police station where he'll be interrogated and formally charged over his escape from custody. He's 37. He was serving time at Nakhon Si Tamarat Prison for attempted murder, was facing a slew of other charges in other cases, including murder, attempted murder and firearms possession. When he escaped and he fled the Maharat uh, Nakonsi Tamarat Hospital where he was being treated for dental problems. Now, he was arrested in Bali last Thursday by Indonesian police for drug dealing, using a fake Indonesian ID and assaulting women. So hardly lying low there in Bali, Indonesia, but uh, he'll be welcomed back to Thailand, his home country, later today. Now heading to Patia and Patia Mail. Patia Mail reporting fair-skinned tourist found dead on Patia Beach. And uh, the photo there says the only identifying marks were distinctive tattoos. And the man was discovered dead on Patia Beach opposite Soy 3 on the evening of June the 2nd. That would have been Sunday. And the deceased identified as a foreign tourist with fair skin was found naked and face down near the shore. Initial examination by authorities revealed no sign of assault and no identification was found on the body, well, except for those tattoos. And police estimate the time of death to be no more than five hours prior to the discovery. So nothing more known on that one. I suppose we might get some more information uh, when they positively ID that body in the next few days. Now heading to Nontebury, just north of Bangkok. CalsodEnglish.com reports hot-headed British man punches Thai village manager to the ground. Now there is some video with this. It shows the assault, but uh, as is our practice, I won't be showing that, but I'll be giving you a good description and also some screenshots. And that there, the British man who's on the roadside of the security gate, uh, giving the security guard a whack. And Mr. Panamet, a 67-year-old manager of a housing estate uh, in Nontebury province, filed a complaint with the uh, local police to press charges against a British man who punched him so hard he fell to the ground. 
The British man named Matthew had been living at the village with his Thai wife for several years, and the story says he's known among security guards as a hot-headed person who frequently causes disturbance. And on the last day of May, uh, Matthew angrily went to the security guard booth, demanded information about all the security guards without specifying the reason. Uh, Mr. Panamet walked over, intending to calm the Englishman down. And the photo there just uh, after he's been punched and then reeling away and uh, falling to the ground. This uh, apparently happening before with some uh, some priors for this British man called Matthew uh, assaulting the uh, Mr. Panamet, the security guard. Uh, no more information on that one. Well, from Calcite English anyway, and not quite sure what set him off. And with thanks to both uh, Five Star Marine and Beach House Thailand, uh, Five Star Five Star Marine, you can contact on fivestarmarinephuket.com. There's also a link in the description of this video if you'd like to uh, check out on a special deal for TNT viewers. And with Beach House Thailand, and they're over there, you can uh, check in the link below if you'd like to check out some of the photos and uh, booking status uh, in the description of this video as well. All right, now let's head to thaipbsworld.com and this story... Has Thailand become the sick man of ASEAN? And Thailand's prolonged political crisis and poor management of the economy over the past few decades have taken a huge toll on the country's growth. And the story goes on, the Thai economy grew just 1.5% in the first quarter of this year after having expanded 1.7% in the fourth quarter of last year and 1.9% for the full year of 2023. The country's been bogged down, it says, by sluggish growth for decades since the 1997 financial crisis. And one of the major causes of the stagnation this year has been the time lag in disbursement of the fiscal 2024 budget due to the delay in its passing by Parliament, which led to a decline in public spending. And the political deadlock after the general election in May 2023, which didn't give any party a clear majority, led to a delay in the formation of a coalition government. And critics have blamed the deep state as being really in charge of the country, which has a domino effect on economic management, especially on how budget is allocated. And the public and opposition parties could cry horse over budget allocations to the Defence Ministry and related organisations, but could change almost nothing. Now, this is quite a long piece, and I'll put a link in the description of this video if you want to read this, well, rather withering criticism of the Thai economy by a publication that's funded by the Thai government. Let's go on. Moreover, politicians and academics cannot vigorously check how the budget is allocated to support the monarchy institution due to the controversial Les Majeste law, which is Article 112 of the Criminal Code, and the judicial system have been blamed for reigning in freedom of expression despite the basic right being enshrined in the Constitution. And there's a lot more to that article, link in the description. Uh, let's follow on a little bit more about Thailand's economy, exemplified in this article. Nation Thailand reporting significant drop in vehicle sales, recorded from January to April 2024, tightening of car loan approvals by financial institutions, and slow economic growth are blamed for decline in vehicle purchases. And in the first four months of this year, there's been a decline of 23, well, nearly 24%. And breaking down the sales, passenger cars are dropped 15.2%. And commercial vehicle sales, which is higher than passenger cars, which is interesting, marked a significant drop of 28.7%. Noting that the most popular car sales here in Thailand are for pickup trucks and they're called commercial vehicles, they get a bit of a tax break and uh, I think that's one of the reasons they're so popular. And here's the, uh, the breakdown of the sales. Now I've marked in yellow all the, uh, the companies, the brands that have dropped. A Toyota down 17.4%. Isuzu, they make principally those pickups. They've dropped nearly 50% in sales. Honda down 4.7%. A BYD, well, they're the only one that's up 50%. Uh, of course, an electric vehicle car maker from China. Then Mitsubishi, they're down 29%. Ford down 42.9%.
So if not for those Chinese EV sales, these numbers would be catastrophic. And the EV market saw a total of 15,161 units sold, accounting for 32% of the total automotive market. And this represents a growth of 27% compared to the same period last year. Uh, the HE, this is the hybrid electric vehicles, grew by 56%, clearly the most popular compared to the battery electric vehicles. Uh, they had a decrease of 4%. So some interesting numbers there about the Thai automotive market. Tuesday's TNT, again, a big thanks to the, the big numbers last week. I think we had 1,500 new subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, an invitation to please do so. That really helps. Now to some good economic news. And Thailand to serve as backdrop for Jurassic World 4, this reported by Patia, thepatianews.com. Thailand's been chosen to serve as the backdrop for Jurassic World 4, the latest sequel in the globally celebrated Jurassic Park franchise. Globally celebrated, all right. And it's going to be filmed from June the 13th to the 16th in locations including Bangkok, Krabi, Trang, Panga, Phuket and Chiang Mai. Now, there's no truth that in Bangkok they're going to be filming Jurassic Park 4 at Parliament House. And the film project's expected to inject an estimated 650 million baht into the country's economy. And the Hollywood crew is also utilising the government's incentive program for foreign films, which offers a 20% rebate to international productions that invest more than 100 million baht into the country. So great to see support for the, the Thai film industry. See them around here quite often. Uh, very prolific and great to see that uh, some foreign companies are seeing the opportunities to use these Thai film crews and, of course, the great locations, which might include some beaches, some clean beaches. This story by patiamail.com, American expat inspires community with daily beach cleanup in Bang Surai. Residents and visitors in Bangsaray are treated to a heartwarming sight as Brian, an American expat known for his friendly demeanour and charming smile, engages in his daily routine of picking up litter along Bangsaray Beach. Brian's become a beloved figure among the local fishermen and the broader community who have shared his inspiring story. And each morning, Brian can be seen meticulously collecting trash left on the beach, a habit that's not only helped to maintain the pristine condition of the coastline, but also set an example of environmental stewardship. So I don't really know any more other than his name is Brian, but on behalf of all of us that visit uh, that beach, thank you very much for your hard work, your dedication and setting a good example. And with that, thanks for everybody tuning in today. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with some of the things happening around Thailand. Look forward to your comments and we'll see you tomorrow.